Welcome to our KPC Daily Devotional. Today, let's read from Ephesians chapter 2, starting at verse 4. But God, who was rich in mercy out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, And this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. This week, We will be hearing from my first collection of devotionals, According to Barclay, Reflections on Life in the Human Pack, a devotional entitled Masquerade. We arrived at the state park, can't remember where, with mountain, lake, wide green swale, picnic grounds, campsites, Lots of families were picnicking that afternoon. So were the geese. Hundreds of them. Flocks of Canadian geese everywhere. I let Barclay, then an impetuous young schnauzer, little more than a puppy, I let him romp while I set up the tent. Kept an eye on him, figuring he'd chase geese. He was excited all right, but not by geese. He discovered goose poop. Swaths of grass were coated in thick, slimy, gray goose poop. Barkley thought he had died and gone to doggy heaven. He frolicked and rolled in it. Now, Barkley's naturally gray, so from a distance, he didn't look much different. Close up, He had a full-body pompadour. Even closer, he stank. Oh, it was bad. Very, very bad. And he was so pleased as he proudly strutted and displayed his new odor. Then he leapt into my arms. Now, anyone who's had a dog knows They like to roll in nastiness. But why? Well, they like to smell different than they normally do. And it makes perfect sense on the hunt. It's easier to stalk your prey if you don't smell like a predator. I guess gazelle don't notice a hungry pack of buffalo dung closing in on them. This isn't so unlike human behavior. Just look at all the perfume and aftershave ads that hint at sexual conquest. Yes, cover your scent for the hunt. However, for dogs, it's not just about the hunt. Dogs simply love to stink for the sake of stinking. They show it off to other dogs, and they compare stench. This, too, makes perfect sense. Human children of all ages like to dress up as ghosts and witches, pirates and cowboys, knights and damsels. We have special holidays around masquerades, like Halloween and Mardi Gras. We have all kinds of costumed festivals, like Scottish Highland Games, and Renaissance fairs, and Civil War reenactments. Since people are visual, we change the way we look to pretend we're somebody else. Well, why shouldn't dogs like to masquerade too? And since dogs aren't all that visual, dress them up like oh, Elvis or 
bumblebees for Halloween, and they obviously won't share our enthusiasm. Dogs rely more on their noses. So when they dress up and play pretend, they don't change the way they look. They change the way they smell. Poor Barkley. I held him under a spigot and scrubbed. The stuff was oily and the water only rolled off. It took a long time to get him passably clean and it was clear we couldn't stay there. I packed the car. We left for other parts. I threw my sweatshirt away. His, his disguise unappreciated. Barkley was so disappointed. Now, dogs don't want to smell bad all the time. It's a special treat, and they like to parade it. Eventually, it wears off, or they clean it up. Masquerading is fun for a while, but not always. People are not so wise. We all like to pretend we are somebody else part of the time, but an awful lot of people pretend they're somebody else all of the time. City kids dress up like rodeo cowboys and drive pickup trucks. Or good kids emulate prison gangsters and cheap hookers. Middle-aged people disguise their hair color or their lack of hair altogether. They pretend to be young. We inject ourselves with deadly toxins and endure the cosmetic surgeon's knife, even radical and risky procedures to permanently change our nose, chin, eyebrows, tummy, breasts, buttocks, because we hope if only we look like somebody else, we might actually feel like somebody else. And that's our problem. We don't like who we are down deep inside. No perfume, no hoodie, no sports car, no hair transplant, no injection, no surgery can change who we are. Even God won't change who we are when he gives us a new heart. He doesn't turn us into somebody else entirely. Rather, he helps us to become more authentically ourselves. We are who he has made us in Christ Jesus. So you can pretend every now and then, but in the final analysis, like yourself. Be yourself. Now figure out who you are and then be who you are. That's who you were made to be and you can be yourself better than anybody else. When you spend your whole life pretending to be somebody you aren't, it's like being dressed up in goose poop. Sooner or later, it's going to stink. I think Barkley pretty much accepts who he is. Oh, he likes to dress up every now and then in other smells, but he's quite content to go back and be himself when the fun is over. So, what have you been rolling in? I wish you a blessed day ahead. Goodbye.